Today, my guest is Daryl Hogan. Daryl, how are you, sir? I'm great, Dave. How are you? I'm doing really well. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, it's not obvious, but we tried to record this before, and I had technical difficulties, so I really appreciate your patience coming back. And yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> Happy to help out. Yeah. We're talking about um, some of the things that you do outside of your job, uh, things that you're really passionate about, uh, some giving back to the community. Tell me a little about that. Yeah, so... Um... I, I am very passionate about um, the state of the black community in North America and, um, you know, just basically trying to find ways to help to empower people and help to people to grow and achieve what we would think of as the American dream. Um, a lot of the stuff that I do is through not-for-profit agencies. and. Um, one of the things that I've discovered along the way is some of these agencies have a really tough time embracing technology, especially some of the newer technologies. Sure. Um, and that's either through, you know, a lack of awareness or it's through a lack of available resources um, to do the work to help to get them up to speed. So um, that's kind of become a passion area of mine um, and something that I'm trying to work towards resolving uh so far in great in a large part by myself but you know hopefully uh this will help to be the catalyst to uh create something bigger out of this oh yeah maybe get the word out through this uh broadcast um yeah, sure. i i think uh what you said is very true of these small nonprofits all across north america maybe it's not so true of i don't know the red cross the united way these big organizations that actually have an it department yeah and that, that's absolutely the, true. Yeah, the, a the large local, part of their the local budget food bank. Goes. Yeah, the local food bank really has that problem. They they're not in the business of technology; they're in the business of getting food to folks that need it. Yeah, for sure, for sure, definitely. Um, but you're correct about a lot of these larger uh, not-for-profit agencies. As a large part of their budget goes towards technology staffing and helping them to adopt technology to further whatever their core mission happens to be. So, um, you know, when you've got an organization that's got a small budget, they're just trying to get by on donations, um, you know, they're just trying to do what they do. And <laughs> the thought of uh, embracing technology as a means to help to further their mission isn't something that, that readily comes to their mind. So how do you help and how can we help? Sure. Um, so one of the things that we can do is look for volunteer opportunities. Um, there's lots of little organizations that are looking for help to get going, whether it's building a website or it's potentially helping to set up desktops or even going so far as to, you know, build operational solutions um, inside the organization. Those are things that we as technologists um, can do to use our skill sets and um, get these people um at least a foot up at, or a foot in the door as far as technology is concerned and perhaps open the door to a uh, lot greater adoption um, and maybe changing the way that they approach their mission operationally. Uh, how do we find those opportunities? Um, I, I think a large part of it is word of mouth. Um, you know, there's a lot of organizations that have um, giving opportunities um, where uh, the corporations have embraced some of these organizations and it's potentially um, an area where you can go and check with your benefits coordinator or your, your community giving coordinator and find out which organizations they support and go out and you know, contact them, see if they they have needs, see if they have uh, a place for you to use, uh, you know, the skills that you can bring to the table. Well, which organizations do you work with and how did you find them? Um, so I found um, Give Black through a volunteer opportunity. Um, they were looking to uh, actually build a website that was um, not as static as the one that they have. Um, this organization um, is a not-for-profit that helps other not-for-profits. So what they've done is they've created um, a clearinghouse or a database of um, Black-founded or Black-focused organizations. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to um, 
create a central repository of these organizations so that people can come and find out what they're all about and even potentially donate money right there on the site. Um, the problem that they have is it wasn't scalable. Um, it is really hard to maintain or has been really hard to maintain. Um, and, and they were just looking for some help. So, you know, it started off with, okay, well, let's see what we can do with the site to, oh my gosh, you have no real uh, DevOps capability to actually maintain the thing um, to, okay, well, let's see if we can get this thing in the cloud and maybe make it a little bit easier for you to host and not have as many, um, you know, a as many internal uh, um responsibilities with regard to hosting a website um, so that your uh, um, so that your office space folks can focus on the core mission which is trying to secure funds for these not for other not-for-profits that they're helping sure make it uh, maintainable so that uh, as soon as Daryl goes away they're not lost they don't have to hire an IT guy to yeah absolutely them. absolutely yeah now you mentioned uh is this the giving gap dot org uh yes giving gap that you, that i'm looking at right now. you sent me this earlier before we started recording uh, and i see it's uh, uh it says one million people one billion dollars and there's dozens of organizations maybe hundreds of organizations linked down here so there's a lot yeah, this might be a good place to start just to drill through these and find the nonprofits that they're highlighting and yeah see absolutely and, you know, you're never going to get turned away if you reach out to these organizations for help. That's, uh, you know, that's one of the key things about um, volunteerism is uh, I've never offered help and been refused. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. uh, you know, taking taking the opportunity and making the first step is a lot easier for somebody who's got skills to give than it is for an organization who's looking for skills um, to bring. Into the yeah, pool. absolutely. And a lot of these places, they really rely on uh, volunteers for every part of the, what they do. You yeah. Know, uh, yeah. The food banks rely on volunteers to be there, you know, handing the food out and packing the food up and, you know, whatever. The, the, yeah, uh, certainly. Typically, they have a shoestring, very, very few paid members. Um, right. <clears throat> uh, this sort of reminds me of, uh, I remember years ago, you and I used to be heavily involved in the Give Camps, which are yeah. – uh, local developers and architects and designers together with local charities and we would build websites or build databases or build crm systems uh over the course of a weekend uh, yeah. powered by pizza and mountain dew pretty <laughs> much yeah so you know and, and it's those types of activities that i think um can not only benefit the uh the agencies that are are having these sites built for them or having you know technology solutions developed for them but it also helps to build a community within the it um broader it community of people who can, who have the time to volunteer and who bring uh a set of skills that that could be useful um to these organizations nice did you run into any challenges once you got into this uh, yeah, lots of challenges. So first being um, just resistance to change. Um, you know, when, when an organization like this has a solution that's working for them, um, any kind of change is a gigantic risk. Um, you know, you say, okay, well, we'll move it to the cloud. Well, you know, we're perfectly fine where we are. Why would we want to move to the cloud? So I know the server's time. right there, and it's under Sarah's desk, right there. Yes, I can see yes, it. I, I, I know where it is, it. and if it catches fire, <laughs> then I can put it out. Um, so, you know, that that's 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 a challenging thing um, for somebody who is not um, really familiar with technology to say, okay, well, we're going to move this into the cloud, and you're never going to see it again. Um, you know, a, as a physical tactile solution, it's, it's right. just going to live up there and it'll be fine. Trust me, you know, <laughs> who am I except this guy who, uh, showed up with it, with a couple of ideas in his head. Yeah. How do you overcome that? Um, really it's, it's gaining trust. You, you really need to, um, demonstrate that a, you have a good solid understanding of this technology. Um, B, that you understand why it's beneficial to the organization to move to the technology. And then C, just building the relationships between you and the, the administrators in the organization to, um, to establish confidence that you, can, that you can actually pull this off. Okay. So you, you helped them rebuild this website. You helped them deploy it to Azure. Did you get some corporate help, like, uh, I don't know, free Azure hours, for example? 
Uh, unfortunately, no. Um, you know, we checked with a couple of cloud providers. None of them really had um, programs that we could that we could leverage right away. Um, one of their challenges was more administratively than anything else. They were still working on their five hundred one three C designation, so okay. it's really hard to find help for an organization when they don't have that. Um, fortunately, they had the budget. Um, okay. to be able to carry some light hosting costs. So that worked out pretty well. Okay. We, we actually had to come up with a solution um, that landed within those budgetary constraints for them. Got it. Okay. That's a lot like a for-profit organization. Yeah, <laughs> they've got exactly. requirements, yeah. they've got a budget, they've got uh, people that are resistant yeah. to change, yep. <laughs> and they've got a lack of knowledge <laughs> as well. Uh, it's, it doesn't really sound that different. Is it, are, what, what are the main differences? You work with plenty of for-profit companies. What are the key differences between that and working with the nonprofit? Um, so the the for profit companies, I think, are much more hierarchical in their decision making. For one thing, um, you know, there are several layers of of approvals that you have to go through before you can do anything. Okay. Um, you know, the second thing is that um, there is a lot. Um, it's a the technology adoption is a lot more mission focused in a for profit organization. You know, they have a broad set of things that they want to accomplish that are related to their mission. And that's why they adopt technology. That's why they change things. And that's why they invest all this money. Um, really, for a small not for profit organization, it's really just about making the day to day operation of the organization better. Um, you know, you've got a small group of people you're working with. You've got a person at the lead who needs to sign the check who may not understand technology at all. And, you know, you have to justify to them why you want them to sign a check to go and spend money to um, to host in the cloud or to, um, you know, buy this database license or whatever it is um, when they they haven't got the foggiest clue why why they're doing what they're doing aside from this is really going to help my mission at the end of the day are you still working with this organization um unfortunately not at the moment i'm a little constrained for time at at, at this point but it's a precious um, resource right there Tom. Yeah, exactly um but left them in in good hands and uh -huh. um they're moving along quite nicely Excellent. What now? Uh, tell us about the people who are watching this. They say, "I want to get involved." I mentioned word of mouth, but um, you need to find that first contact to get that. What's what's yeah. what's step one? Uh, if I want to, if I as a technologist want to get involved with the nonprofit. So um, I, I did mention um, giving coordinators at your company uh, okay. can sometimes help. Um, if you happen to be a part of a tight technology community like we've been in the past. Um, there's a good place to say, you know, contact a couple of your, uh, your, your closest allies and say, you know, ha have you found an opportunity or I'm looking for an opportunity to help somebody out? Do you know of anything that I can get involved with? Or do you know someone who knows someone? And, you know, you start to build a network of people who know that you're, uh, looking for the opportunity to make a difference and, you know, what kind of skills you can bring to the table. Uh Excellent ideas. Um, is there anything we haven't talked about that we have that we should have? Um, you know what? I think the the one is the 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 lack of access to really to volunteers with a really solid uh, technology background and how hard those people are to come by. Yeah. Um, you know, when when we volunteer and, um, you know, for those of us who are technologists and, and uh, enjoy spending some of our time volunteering, we all we all know that that time is a precious commodity. So we can't necessarily, you know, donate um, hours or weeks or days. And, you know, it's usually a fly in, do what you can do and fly out sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty consistent. I'm finding across um uh, kind of the, the not-for-profit community. Um, one of the things we as technologists need to understand is that when we go into these organizations and we propose change, that that change has to be sustainable. 
because yeah. when you leave, the next person who comes in is is likely going to come in blind. And right. you need to leave behind a solution that a person can pick up and understand and be able to not only maintain, but also improve and leave better than they found it when they came into the organization. Yeah, good point. Uh, it's a lot of people. It's a very disconnected uh, model yeah. of software yeah, development. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, you mentioned early on that you're focused mostly on uh, helping people of color. Is that Does that make a difference in terms of how you approach this kind of volunteering? Um, no, not really. This is just um, something where I feel I can make a difference. I can set an example and, um, you know, I can have the most impact. Um, it would be the same if I had walked into the United Way and said, hey, I'm looking for an organization to volunteer with. And it was not a uh, uh, an organization that was focused on the black community. Um, okay. You know, I think that's that's a very um, that's more a personal choice on my point, on my part than anything else. Excellent. Um, yeah. Well, Daryl, it's been a pleasure talking with you, and I'm, gonna, I'm checking out giving up giving at uh, givinggap dot org. I'm learning how to speak English <laughs> as I read it, and uh, look at all the great uh, work you've done and all the great work they're doing as well. Thank you all very right. much. Thank you. The greatest thing that I've found about being in the technology industry is the number of great friends that I've acquired over the years.